Hello everyone, I'm Brandi Clevenger, the writer and creator of Being Fibro Mom, a blog all about family living with fibromyalgia. I'm also the host of this show, Fibro Live, where we discuss the latest news and ho hottest topics of fibromyalgia. If you're watching live, thank you for joining us and taking the time to watch us. If you weren't able to watch us live and you're watching the replay, thank you so much for watching us. I'd ask everyone, if you find this video helpful, to please share it out. The more we share our knowledge, the more that we can help um, raise awareness of whatever topic we're talking about. So today we're going to tackle essential oils. And to help me tackle this subject, I have my friend Mandy Scherer joining us. She is not a medical expert, I'd like to point that out, but she is knowledgeable about essential oils and she is a Young Living consultant. Hi Mandy, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. There's no problem. Um, so I want to just preface this video to say that essential oils do not claim to cure anything. They can help ease discomfort and they can help with various symptoms, but they do not cure anything. I also would like to state that essential oils are not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. Um, with having say, said that, I just want to also say that I am also not a medical expert. And anything that you hear in this video or find online about essential oils, it's always best to just consult with your physician or someone that is professionally trained with essential oils. So, Mandy, if you're ready, we'll just go ahead and launch into those questions. I'm ready. All righty. So, is essential oil uh, or essential oils a new fad? Well, I think that uh, essential oils have definitely become more mainstream in the past few years. However, they've been used by many cultures around the world for centuries. As far back as ancient Egypt, they were used for mummification. Um, you all know the story in the Bible, I'm sure, about the wise men bringing Jesus, frankincense, and myrrh. So, um, you know, their use has varied between cultures from religious to um, healing the sick but they've definitely been around for a very long time. Um, so I'm excited that people are learning more about them and what they can do for them. So I know that I'm still learning all my controls. So I know that I didn't have this um, listed in our questions, but I wanted to, what do you think, why do you think that essential oils are just now becoming popular again? Well, I think in general, we as a society are looking for more natural ways and more green ways to do everything. Um, and essential oils can be used in place of na less natural remedies and items in so many ways, like from addressing pain um, to coughing, um, everything in between as far as ailments go. But they also can be used um, for cleaning and for killing germs and things like that around your home. So um, that, you know, I'd rather use a little bit of thieves oil than bleach any day and know that I'm still getting the, um, killing the germs. Um, the other thing about essential oils is they enter your bloodstream within 28 seconds. Um, within two minutes, they've entered every cell in your body within 28 minutes. Um, they, within two minutes, they've entered your entire body and within 28 minutes, they've entered every cell in your body. So because they're natural, your body metabolizes them within two and a half hours. So they, they work really quickly, but they also leave your system very quickly and don't leave residual side effects hanging around for days after using them, like some um, medications, like cold meds and things like that. So I think that people are looking for that. And I think that's one of the reasons they've become more popular. Yeah, and there's also, you know, I think it kind of correlates to how in the news late um, lately they're talking about op opioids and how, you know, they're being regulated and people are trying to get away from them. I know me personally, I have negative reactions to prescription medication, so I started exploring essential oils because I can only do natural treatment. So, you know, maybe right. with all of this in the marketplace, maybe that's why it is becoming a new fad, but it but you said it has been around for many, many years and it's just now becoming popular. Right. Right. Okay. So, um, why? Okay. never mind. I already asked that question. You answered that question. <laughs> I'm just trying to go through my outline to kind of keep me on track. That's fine. Um, do you think that essential oils really work? I, they work for me. Um, they've become part of our daily routine because they really do work. Um, and we use them for everything in our house. They're, the, they're our first go-to for everything. So the other day, my 11-year-old was cooking some bacon and, and spilled some grease on herself. And the first thing she did was grab our little roller ball of, um, you know, uh, lavender to put on that burn. 
and treat that burn. And we didn't even think about grabbing ice or water or any or or uh, neosporin or any of those things, but we used lavender and that's our first go-to. Um, if bugs are bothering us and we're outside, I use purification or um, citronella oils on my porch when I'm sitting out there enjoying the weather. Um, you know, I no longer buy expensive chemical laden moisturizers or shampoos. This is my moisturizer. It's a face serum that I made up with hemp oil and it has, I think, frankincense, patchouli, element, LMI, some others mixed in. I kind of mix it up every time, but those three usually are in it. Um, and, you know, it doesn't cost me $40 in a drugstore to buy something full of chemicals. I've got something natural that really works for me. Um, you know, my shampoo bars have rosemary and lavender in them because they support hair growth. The moisturizer I use on my legs have grapefruit because it slows hair growth and I hate shaving. Um, when someone at our house has a stomach ache, we grab our diagize and and treat it that way. Um, when, I mean, I could go on and on. When my four-year-old was having a problem with bedwetting, we used cypress over her, her bladder each night, and that really took care of that. So there's so many different ways to use them and different ways that they've become part of our routine. Uh, I even use them. I have homemade dishwasher detergent that I use in my dishwasher. I even use them in that in my cleaning supplies. Um, when we make slime, we add essential oils to them to make them smell good. So um, we use them literally for everything in my house. So, but, yeah, as, but as always to say, they do work. They work for us anyway. <laughs> And, but as like I'm going to say continuously throughout this broadcast is to exercise care and to know the, the do's and don'ts of essential oils, which um, Mandy will go over with us. Um, when you mentioned about your your children having stomach aches, you know, I use essential oils, too, and I've made my own little concoction in a roller bottle. And my kids have gotten to the point now that when they're sick or, you know, they're not feeling well to their stomach, they don't immediately ask for you know, whatever we used to use for their stomach aches. They say, mom, my stomach's not feeling so well. Can I have the roller bottle? And it's clearly labeled, it's for tummy pain. Um, and they roll it on and they start to feel better. Um, again, it doesn't cure anything, but it does help ease that discomfort that's happening in their stomach. And I like that my children, you know, it's, it's you know, I have carrier oil in it. So it's not just straight oils in it. So it is safe to use on my children. Um, but I like that they go to that instead of, you know, reaching for whatever, you know, Pepto for kids or whatever it is. And, right. you know, it just like and you were saying, there's essential funny. oils for everything. So. Yeah. And you always want to dilute oils for kids. You want to start with the min bare minimum in there and dilute them a lot for kids. So that that's a very important point that you made that to make sure they're safe for your kids, you're diluting them with a carrier oil, which we'll talk a little bit more about. But, you know, for the longest time or even now, you can't buy cough meds for children under a certain age. Yep. So if a little bit of lavender on their chest helps to calm a cough at night, uh, why not? You know, um, there's no other way to treat it, really, other than the natural ways now. Um, pediatricians are saying don't use the cough medicines. Right. Um, Heidi, thank you for joining us and thank you for your question. I want to go over just a few more um, safety points about essential oils and then we'll address Heidi's question. So are there studies to support the effectiveness of essential oils? There have been a lot of studies um, to support the effectiveness. They, they, I'm not really familiar enough with any of them to quote them, but um, I did give you a, a link to some resources that you can share with your listeners um, to, to learn more about that. Okay, I was just getting that. I'm going to go ahead and post it as a comment. So it should have come up as a comment, the link that... Mandy was um, just talking about. So when someone's looking to buy essential oils, what are the do's and don'ts? Well, I think one of the first things you want to look for is does the oil expire? Because pure essential oils never expire. So if there's an expiration date on the bottle, the oil is probably mixed with a carrier oil. And when we talk about carrier oils, I mean like a vegetable oil, like fractionated coconut oil, or, um, you know, it can be any kind of oil, olive oil those kinds of things. So you're not getting a pure oil, you're getting a diluted oil in those cases um, because that kind of oil does go rancid, but essential oils do not. Um, you know, for me, I'm putting these oils into my body, whether it be through inhaling them, rubbing them onto my skin or actually ingesting them. So I am not willing to put my family's health and my health at risk with cheap oils. Yeah, you might get a good deal on Amazon on something, but 
um, it, it, even if it has the label of a, a major oil company, they don't allow selling on Amazon. So you don't know what you're getting. You may be getting something that's been tampered with. You always want to buy oils from a trusted um, distributor of a major brand. Um, and lately you can buy oils pretty much anywhere. One well-known department store is, is selling them. Actually, several are. But um, I went in and you've got this beautiful display um, with glorious fields of lavender. It says the oils are 100% pure and natural, um, that they contain no synthetic fragrance, parabens, or GMOs. But it, when you look a little bit closer at the bottle, you'll see that the fourth ingredient on the bottle is ethanol, like the stuff you put in your gas tank, ethanol. Um, that's just that's scary and gross to me. Um, not to mention that ethanol is usually derived from a GMO. So especially with larger scale farms um, that produce those, the corn that, that makes ethanol. So, you know, you read a little further and it talks about it causes skin ir irritation, causes serious eye damage, may cause an allergic skin re reaction. And then the thing that really got me on these bottles may be fatal if swallowed and enters airways. Well, you're buying this to inhale it. <laughs> so you're putting it into something that they're selling to inhale it. Um, so that's scary to me. And I think people see a, a smaller price tag and they think that they're getting a better deal. But if you spend a little more money for a quality product, you're going to get a more concentrated oil that you use actually use less of. Whereas I might have to use 10 drops of a cheap oil. I'm only using two of my Young Living oil. And it, so therefore, it's, it is actually cheaper. You're using less and you're using it for longer. And, and when, when you, you, when you when talk you about, about, you know, the, know, the fillers the that are in essential oils, it made me think of supplements. So supplements, they're not regulated by the FDA, just like essential oils are not regulated by the FDA. Mm -hmm. Well, with um, supplements, they have been known, like companies have been known to put things such as, rat poison as a filler because they're not regulated. So they can put whatever they want in there. That's the same thing with essential oils that Mandy's trying to point out is that they're not regulated. So you don't know. And Mandy, correct me if I'm wrong. Do they have to put all the ingredients listed and listed on the bottle if they're not regulated? They do not. They do not. Um, the only time that they have to list information is if it's if they're saying that you can ingest it. Okay. And while, we'll ta while we're talking about ingesting, um, I'm going to skip ahead one question that says, you know, there are claims that suggest that suggest ingesting essential oils are not safe. Um, are they safe? Well, I, I think ingesting oils is a very personal choice that should be done with caution. And you always want to consult with your physician, especially if you're taking other kinds of medications, because they oils can interact with medications. So you always want to consult with your physician or your um, naturopathic provider before you ingest oils. Um, Young Living does have a line of oils that is FDA approved compliant um, label for ingesting. It's their vitality line. Um, but having said that, people need to remember that oils are very concentrated. A single drop of essential oil contains between 80 to 300 chemical constituents. So it takes, you know, 50 lemons to make one bottle of lemon oil. Would you eat 50 lemons? <laughs> you know, would you even eat a whole lemon at one time? You want to make sure that you're um, only using a little bit at a time to start and then working your way up to what works for you. So, um, you, you know, you wouldn't take five aspirin you don't want to overuse oils in the same way. You want to make sure that you're, def you're really um, diluting them and um, using them in a safe way. And I'm glad that you brought up the whole medication thing because with essential oils, it's just like medication. Like you said, you're not just going to pop open a bottle and just start, you know, taking all these pills, right. even with gabapentin and some of the other prescribed medications that I know about there, they don't just put you on it. I was on an antidepressant several years ago and they just didn't, my doctor just didn't put me at the full dose. She tiered me up slowly. And when I was ready to come down, you have to be tiered down. It's the th same thing with essential oils. Use precaution with them and just use them a little bit at a time until you figure out what works for you. And while there are different oils that treat different things or that not treat because we, oils don't treat anything but can help with symptoms of different things, not every oil is going to work the same for every person. So you do have to do a little bit of experimenting 
with your oils. Um, for example, lavender really hypes my kids up. It makes me feel very calm, but it's like Benadryl hypes my kids up, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, it's the, what works for me may not work for you, um, but that we're going to talk a little bit more. I know about some resources where you can find out what oils um, can help with what, but um, I think that it's really important to kind of keep an open mind and try different things. And if something doesn't feel like it's working for you, then don't continue to use it and move on to something different. And that's true. And it's just like with everything else in life, I think sometimes people hear or see essential oils and they immediately just go off on the deep end. I mean, you've seen on my being fibro mom page, Mandy, how people have just ripped into me with my articles. And those were that was some of the heart like lighter comments that have been made. I've had some very harsh things said to me right. because simply because I use essential oils. And I think if you want, if you're open to trying them, just try them out and just see Um and you, you said that you're with Young Living, like I said in the intro, too. Right. So that we know of, there are two big companies that sell essential oils. We won't talk about the one, but we'll talk about <laughs> Young Living. So why do you choose Young Living over the other companies? Well, Young Living is the oldest um, of the two big companies and of any of them, really. They've been around for over 20 years. Um, they, I, they, I, I did a lot of research on this because, again, I think that oils can be great, um, can be great, but I also think that they can be very dangerous. So I wanted to make sure that I was getting the best for my family. Um, the the Young Living oils, they have no fillers, so they don't expire. You'll never see an expiration date on a on a Young Living oil. Um, but Young Living won't even plant seeds in oils that have been chemically treated because they. They don't want to use um, any chemicals or organic pesticides because it changes the DNA of the soil and then changes the oil. So they use their own essential oils to keep the bugs away from their plants. Um, they're, as I said, the original company. Um, they're, um, they offer what is called a seed to seal promise, meaning they own all of their seeds. They own their farms and they partner with others and they distill all of their own oils. Um, there's another thing that makes oils less pure or le less potent, I should say. Um, there's a lot of companies that will distill and then reuse the plant and distill again. Um, and they'll do that up to four or five times. So each time you're getting a weaker product. Young Living does one distillation and that's it. Um, oftentimes you won't be able to get things from Young Living, certain oils that you love because they didn't like the crop and they threw it out. Um, so, that to me says they're not about money. They're about making sure that their customers get the best product that they can. Um, the, none of the other companies have control over their plants or their farms or their distillation product pro process. So that's why I chose Young Living. Um, and that's why I feel like I, I find that their oils have been great for our family. And I have used the other companies as well. So I have tried the others. I've, I've tried the others as well. And that's why I started talking to you about essential oils. Cause I was like, tell me why you prefer young living. And when you started telling me some of these things, I would, you know, started looking online and you, everything you were saying was absolutely correct. Not that I doubted you, but I wanted to see it in black and white for myself. And when Mandy was just talking about the seed to seal um, promise. Um, she's provided me with a link and I just put it in the comments so you can click on that after the show and, and read all about that. Um, I also heard something else. One of my other friends, I was talking to her, I just recently met her and I told her that, you know, I was with this other company and she went on about Young Living, not to oppose what I was saying, but just tell me why she loves Young Living. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she said to me that, you know, I, not that I thought she was false, but I just was kind of curious about, she said, if, for example, she doubted anything at any time or wanted to just see the farms that she could just contact Young Living and say, hey, I want to see your farm or the crops or whatever. And she'd be welcome to come out there and tour. Is is that how it works? That's the truth. And, um, wow. you know, what's really cool is for uh, for some, they actually provide free trips to their farms for their distributors that are, you know, that are selling more. The more you sell, the more. Uh, you get qualified to go have these trips to go see their farms. And so I've seen people from my upline posting on Facebook pictures of walking through the Young Living Farms and seeing the distillation process and everything. Um, I, the founder of Young Living, Gary Young, is very much kind of an old hippie. And um, 
his mission was always really just to, to help people and not, it was never about the bottom line for him. So he's very open and, and has made the company really, he knows the, he, those are his employees, you know, his distributors are his employees and he treats them well. And that makes me like the company even more because that's like when you buy locally from the farmers near you, I mean, that's, you want to be able to have that trust and where you're buying and know what you're buying and what you're getting into because the whole point of using essential oils is knowing what you're putting into your body in order to do that natural process and to know that it's coming from the crop and the farm and you can you know see it and know that someone is taking charge of it it just it makes me feel more comfortable about using all essential oils me too me too Okay, so we went ahead and just told you all about essential oils. So what we're going to do is run through some of the questions. I noticed that there are some people that are commenting. Um, Heidi says, I am curious about diffusing. My husband and I want to start doing it through the house, but don't know where to start. So how could you help Heidi with that? Well, I don't know if you can see my diffuser back here behind me, but I almost always have it going um, in the home, in my home. And um, basically what you do is you open up the diffuser, you put a little water up to the, the to a line. Um, you put a few drops of oils. Again, I would start with a, maybe just two drops um, and work your way up. I usually use anywhere from two to five drops in mine. And then you turn it on and, and you have it. There you have it. Um, I use at night, I put a sleep blend into mine. Um, there's tons of information online and on Pinterest with different blends of oils that you can use in your diffuser for different things. During the day, I'm, I put in a, a blend called Energy. Um, it's a Young Living blend, but I also love to use bergamot and some of the more uplifting oils, peppermint, to get me going because during the day, I need my energy. So um, I swear that having that diffuser going gets me moving around the house and cleaning better. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, you just want to start with um, a little bit at a time and work your way up. And so for the diffuser, do you, is it, okay, it's preferred to buy your diffuser off a of Young Living, but let's say we were looking for an alternative, you know, more affordable price. I don't know how much your Young Living diffuser is. I'm not to say that it's expensive. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but is, is, it, is it okay to buy it from another source other than Young Living, a diffuser? Well, I mean, obviously it's okay. <laughs> you can do whatever, you know, you want to do what works best for you. The, you want to try to find one that has a hospital grade so that um, because citrus oils especially break down plastic. So if you buy a diffuser that um, does, is not medical grade, it can break down the plastics and, um, and your diffuser stops working quicker, but it also you know, it's releasing those toxins into the air that, of the plastic that is breaking down. Um, Young Living has a starter kit that does make the diffuser affordable because you get 11 oils with it. And so it comes with your diffuser and your 11 oils. And so that's how I started out with it. Um, and that's a great way to start. But again, if, um, if you can't make that kind of investment right now, um, you can look for something that has a good quality medical grade um, plastic in it. And to go off of that, do not, when you put essential oils into your water, cause I do a drop of orange or lemon, depending on how I'm feeling for the day. Don't mm -hmm. do it in a plastic cup right. because I put it in a plastic cup and it ruined my plastic. Cup. <laughs> <laughs> put it in yes, glass. it will. And you know, I've used tea tree to get, um, the smell out of, a. um, it gets the, it's, it works well for getting the, um, the, rancid milk smell out of a sippy cup however it also will break down the the pictures on your sippy cup and will take them right off so um these are potent things you want to be careful i mean tea tree is obviously one of the more potent ones and and i use that for my cleaning and in my cleaning supplies um because it does take off grease and grime and and marks on the um walls and that kind of thing but you do want to be careful lemon's another one that's really good for taking off um, I've used it to clean the, the ink off of a doll's face. So it will take off um, your plastic. Yes. <laughs> Always use glass. <laughs> um, I use essential oils everywhere in my house. And when I say that I put it in my water, I have a huge tumbler. That's mm -hmm. probably like, it's probably like two and a half glasses of water. So I put like one drop in that huge thing. Um, so if I think if I use anything smaller, 
I think it would be a little too strong. Um, yeah. But like Mandy was saying, I mean, these are concentrated bottles, you know, just use precaution with that. So yes. have, having said that, what are the various ways besides doing diffusing? Can you use essential oils? I know you said cleaning stuff, but well, there's three, the three main ways, and we've already talked about two of them. And one was um, aromatically, which is diffusing. And then the other that we talked about is ingesting. Um, the, this, another great way to use them in a very portable way is um, to use um, in a rollerball, like to use topically. So like I have this set of rollerballs I take with me in my purse when I go someplace. And um, it has just a few drops of oils in it, maybe 10, and then I fill it to the top with fractionated coconut oil. And as you can see, there's a little roller ball here and you just roll it, can roll it onto your skin, um, roll it onto a bug bite. If you get a bug bite, if you have a headache, you can roll it onto, you know, your pulse points, uh, whatever you might need as far as um, taking it, that, that makes them very portable. So that's a great way to use them if you don't have a diffuser yet. Um, and again, we talked about the um, ingesting, you talked about putting it in your water. Um, and, you know, I'll take a little bit of peppermint and I'll just put a drop on my thumb and put it to the roof of my mouth um, when I had a headache. So that's another way to use it. Um, and you can also buy vegetable capsules and put drops into those to swallow. I usually, if I do that, I put a little bit of honey in with it because it makes it taste better when you burp it up. Um, but you can you can ingest that way as well. So there's a, a lot of different ways to use them. Um, I, li yeah. I like the essential oils because I just play around with it. One of our mutual friends, Chris, she, you know, when I started first on essential oils and I started talking to her about it, she was like, oh, try this and try that. You know, don't be afraid to try things. Um, someone else in our neighborhood, when I was talking to her about essential oils, she was like, just make up your own concoctions, you know, just figure out what you like mm -hmm. and what works for you. And so I've made my own little bottles for anxiety and my, I mean, you can get the little roller bottles as long as they're glass, you can yeah. buy them online. And I mean, I buy a bulk of them for just a few dollars off of Amazon and I make my own little things. I mean, I have mm -hmm. one for congestion for my feet. Like when I'm my sinuses feel clogged, you know, I rub it on my feet for that, you know, just dilute it with some carrier oil and you can my do all kinds of stuff. roller ball is one of my favorites. Um, what is that one? It's lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Ooh. And, you know, in Charleston where we are, there's pretty, it's pretty much allergy season all year long. So that one works great for keeping, keeping the sniffles away due to allergies. I love that um, one. So Angela, hi, Angela. Um, Angela says that she's used a few drops of thieves oil and one other that she can't remember. Um, and she had a fever blister and for her, it worked. She just put it under her tongue and near her throat glands and tastes nasty, but worth it. That reminds me of frankincense. I knew one time when I was just talking about Chris, I was not feeling well one day and Chris walked all the way down here and visited with me for a few minutes. And then she gave me frankincense and she was like, put this under your tongue and it tastes horrible. Yeah. But within, I would say an hour I was up and walking around again and I, you know, I wasn't up a hundred percent, but I did feel a lot better than before when she had come over. Yeah. The, the thieves, um, has clove in it and clove is a great one for, you can put kind of on your jawline if you're having a toothache. Um, you can put it in your mouth, um, on a cotton ball, but I like to just use it on the outside, just right here. If there's a toothache or like with the kids teething, it can be very diluted to use on their, um, jawline. For those kinds of things. Um, if you have an earache, um, oregano is great. It's a very hot oil and it smells very strong and I don't like the smell. Most people probably don't, but you know, you can put a little bit around your ear, um, the outside of your ear and it really can help with an earache. Um, so you don't have to put it in your mouth for it to help with those things. That's what's so great about, about, about them that there's very versatile ways to use them, whatever works best for you. So um, if we're going to go through some readers' questions. And if you okay. continue to have questions even after the show, just keep putting them in the comments below. And if I don't know the answer, I'll reach out to Mandy and get an answer from her. Um, my friend Rick, oh, my sister's online. Hi, Tiff. My friend Rick says that he bought a few diffusers that were also classified as cold mist humidifier. Are those types okay or does it make any difference? I think those are fine. I mean, obviously a diffuser is putting humidity into the air um, in cold mist. So I think most of them are going to going to do that. <laughs> I think most of them are cold mist humidifiers. 
Okay. And Rick also has a good question. Is olive or almond oil okay to dilute the oils for topical use because he has an intolerance to all things coconut? Absolutely. And I have a child with, um, of nut, I have two children with nuts allergies. So we avoid almond oil, but almond oil is a great one. Um, you can use basic, you could use basic canola oil, really, if you wanted to. Um, I do try to choose an organic oil because, again, I'm putting it on my skin to be absorbed into my body. So I want to go as as the best I can. But grapeseed oil, um, olive oil, um, anything like that will work. There's an oil called jojoba, I yes. think it's called. Mm-hmm. And that is, does that have any nuts in it? Because I've never heard of jojoba. jojoba. I can't remember. Jojoba might be considered a tree nut. Okay. Yeah. I, I actually do have some of that. I, I use it for different things, but I mean, you could even put it in your vitamin E oil if you wanted to. That's a more expensive oil. I find grape seeds a great one because it, there's not a lot of people that are sensitive to that one and it's actually pretty inexpensive to buy. So grape seeds, a good one. Hemp oil is great. If you're using it for anything like to deal with um, acne on your face or or a moisturizer, hemp oil is a great one because it's very non-comedogenic. It doesn't clog your pores. I'm going to have to ask you more questions about that later because <laughs> I have, I get a lot of redness. I mean, right now yeah. you can't see it, but I do get redness and irritation on my face. And um, I haven't tried using any essential oils on it, but I have heard that you can put a drop of, I think it was frankincense in like a, like a cream moisturizer, whatever you're using in the palm mm-hmm. of your hand, just put a drop rub it in and then rub it on to take care of that redness. Yeah. Tea tree is a good one for that as well. Frankincense um, is frankincense is great for anti-aging. It's pretty, pretty much great for anything to do with your skin. So um, I should just bathe in frankincense. Bathe, well, yes, if you, it's an expensive oil, but, um, but when you're diluting it, a little goes a long way. So it's one that I always have that will always be in my face serum. Um, <laughs> that's one that I use a lot. Okay, so for someone that has never used oils before, never used essential oils, and they've watched the show, and they've used all the precaution, and they're just ready to jump on board, what is the best, most cost-effective way for someone that's never used it before to go onto Young Living and just start it without blowing money because it may or may not work? Well, the starter kit's a great way to do that. Um, And I can provide you with the link to that. Um, I'm actually typing it in here for you right now. Um, But it is a, um, it is 11 of the most used oils. So you have um, the, I can't remember, lavender, lemon, frankincense, um, copaiba, which is great for pain. Um, several, 11 different oils, plus you get your diffuser, plus you get some samples of some other oils and um, you become a member, uh, but don't let that scare you. You don't have to buy anything else. Um, But for a very good price, you're getting pretty much everything you need to get started. Um, You can also start with the single oils. I think um, for me, lavender is kind of a go-to for everything. I use lavender in almost everything I do. Um, it's very versatile oil. It's kind of like your Windex of oils, you know, when you're talking. I don't know if y'all have seen my big fat Greek wedding. Put some yes. Uh, <laughs> lavender, say, lavender is that for me. <laughs> if yeah. kids are hurt, put some lavender on it. You got an ant bite, put some lavender on it. Um, you got a headache? Have some lavender. Um, Lavender, peppermint, and lemon are three of the very basic oils that are great for starting with as well. So if you're just looking at buying the single oils to do topically. And when, okay, so you said the word membership. That can scare a couple of people. (laughs) So when you say membership with Young Living, what does that mean? Well, what's great about the membership with Young Living is you don't ever have to do anything else. Once you have that starter kit, you're a member for life and you get everything at wholesale. Um, you're, I, I will also be adding you to um, some Facebook, a Facebook group where you will be able to find resources. Um, I think there's like 30,000 people in this group now. And you can search pretty much anything in that group and come up with um, some suggestions for oils that have worked for actual real life people to address those symptoms. Um, and so you also get the support of me as a consultant um, or, you know, if you're with any other Young Living consultant, you want to have somebody that's there to support you that you can ask questions. If you buy off Amazon, you're just buying off Amazon and you don't have that kind of support. So um, it 
it, it's a good deal. Um, and membership basically means support and not that you ever have to buy anything ever again. If you buy the starter kit and don't ever want to do it again, that's fine too. That's awesome. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, and as far as the Facebook groups now, I, I do not have anything to do with Young Living. Um, but as far as I have used their oils, but I am not, uh, I don't know what you guys call Young Living. Or distributor. Distributor. Okay. Um, I forgot where I was going Remember. with that. <laughs> oh, the support groups, the Facebook yeah. support groups. I know when I was with the other oil company and I was a member of the Facebook support groups and I would just, you know, type in a question and ask it. Not always just because somebody likes essential oils doesn't mean that they're on board for every single essential oil. Absolutely. Because lemon may work for someone they're not going to say lemon works so everything works they might say you know lemon works for me or doesn't work for me but it might work for you or whatnot right right um, so um I, I think for me the support of the group like i mentioned that we use cypress for my daughter who was having problems with bedwetting um i didn't know where to start with that i you know i, I didn't know anybody personally that had dealt with that um, so I went on to, we call it our, our li the library. Um, I went on to the library and I searched about wedding and about five different posts came up talking about using the, um, the Cypress to, to deal with that. And so that's how I, um, that's how I um, learned to use that. So I would have never found that. So really you don't want to buy the oils and not know how to use them. It's an investment. So you, you don't want to do that. You know, you want to have somebody that can support you. And not everybody that is associated with young living is not going to knock down your door and pressure you. I don't need, I, how long did we know each other, Mandy, before I even knew that you did young living? <laughs> it seems like everybody I know that sells or as associated with young living, it's like I stumble upon it. I'm not bombarded with this like, oh, essential oils, you should use it. Yeah. Da, da, da. I mean, to me, I love them and I'll talk to talk about them all day long because they work well for my family. But I'm also not going to be that annoying person that's always talking about essential oils. <laughs> so, um, I think that that, you know, that makes a difference. Uh, you don't want to be pressured to buy stuff. It, this isn't about selling for me. This is about actually helping individuals. And that those are the people that I find the most helpful. Yeah. So Rick says, um, he's talking about the jojoba oil. Mm -hmm. Can it be used with hemp oil for a good muscle pains and tension relief? Absolutely. Um, you know, you can, whatever works for you, if you're already using that, um, there's a great oil called Panaway that's great for the muscle tension relief um, that I like to use So um, for that. But I, what I really like to do is I... You said you can't use coconut oil, but um, to take shea butter and another carrier and mix those together with a little bit of magnesium oil and use the pan away with that. That's amazing for muscle relief and tension. And I'm going to brag on Mandy for uh, just a second here. Um, Mandy also makes a magnesium lotion. I'm sorry, Mandy, if I'm just going <laughs> to talk about that for a second. <laughs> Um, maybe make a magnesium lotion and she gave me a little sample jar of it and I find it really helpful. Um, what do you put in that magnesium lotion? Cause it does work. Yeah. I use, um, regular coconut oil, but again, you could do whatever you want. Um, you could use something in, in place of that. Um, a about a tablespoon of beeswax, uh, shea butter. And then I actually make my own uh, magnesium oil with magnesium flakes. I boil them and make the oil out of the magnesium flakes. And I add just a little bit of that to it as well. Um, the beeswax makes it kind of thicken up more like a lotion. And so um, that's where the beeswax comes in for it. Um, but that keeps it from being too runny, especially you may want to increase that if you're using something like jo jojoba oil or hemp oil in place of the coconut oil, which is a more solid oil. That makes sense. <laughs> I, I love using it. <laughs> Good. 
Um, well, I don't see any more questions coming in right now. I know that there is a little bit of a delay, but we're going to go ahead and just wrap this up. If you have any additional questions after the video is over, like I said, just go ahead and continue to comment below in the section. And if I can't answer it, I'll ask, I'll ask Mandy to help me out with that. Um, Mandy, thank you so much for coming online and answering all these questions. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I had fun. Thank you. All right, everyone. Have a great Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.